So, hi everyone. Here I go again uh, with another guest, Adam Gibson. Hi. I'm very happy to be with him. So, let's start with the questions. And let's start with the first one because I'm very curious about them. So, what's your story with Bitcoin? How and when did you meet Bitcoin the first time? Um, well, I think the correct answer to that is 2012, but you know, um, ever since like the financial crisis, I was very interested in um, issues around finance and uh, so I kind of heard about it offhand in 2012, but I thought mm, it doesn't seem very realistic, you know, um, and over, over some time, maybe by the beginning of 2013, I did take it seriously and then I sort of read the white paper and it just fit all my interests, you know, in um, in mathematics and computer science and cryptography and finance and everything and it just seemed like a great idea so that's when I got involved. <laughs> yes, great idea. We are very happy <laughs> that you got involved in Bitcoin. So, you work a lot on privacy and portability of Bitcoin. Why do you think they are so fundamental? Well, I do think they are fundamental but I'm, I'm not sure if I think they are the most fundamental. Mm -hmm. um, Probably, if I had to like pin one feature down, it would be like censorship resistance, you know. Um, but it's clearly the case that uh, money has to have the property of fungibility to some extent. A lot of people would say, like, it's a completely binary thing, you know, money is either fungible or it's not. I don't actually agree with that. For example, you know, people will say cash in, in notes is, is perfectly fungible, but it isn't actually perfectly fungible, you know, that there are stories like, or people won't accept the Greek Euro banknotes because, you know. Um, so I don't think fungibility is an absolute, but I think after like censorship resistance, it's maybe the most important property so that, you know, you can actually, um, you know, money shouldn't have a memory in that sense. So, uh, you know, people will often say fungibility, they'll associate privacy with criminal activity. You know, you can understand why they do, but on the other hand, it's clearly obvious that you know just ordinary businesses need privacy, so it's it's certainly not just about criminals. Yeah, so. so, what are, in your opinion, the most promising texts to reach uh, privacy and fungibility, and why can we just work on privacy-oriented uh, altcoins, Monero, Dash, Zcash, or whatever? Yeah, this is a very big question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this probably yes. Um, so. Uh, what are the most promising texts? Well, oh, some combination of uh, Lightning, uh, Tumblebit, which has a kind of a Lightning side bit to it as well. Um, there's CoinJoin and CoinSwap on chain. There's um, I'm going to forget some things now. <laughs> there's there's several other little bits and pieces of ideas. Uh, of course, there's confidential transactions, but uh, that doesn't exist on chain today, and it has a scale issue. And there's other things, I'm sure I'm forgetting some. Now, as for altcoins, I wouldn't just say, just I, I generally wouldn't write off altcoins full stop myself. I, I think I can certainly see that they're less important than some people give them credit for, but they're not zero importance. And certainly as experiments, you can look at things like uh, Monero and uh, Zcash today as very interesting experiments. Um, you can debate about various aspects of them. But in terms of, you know, should we just just use altcoins, there's there's several issues, like there's issues around experimental cryptography, things that maybe aren't as safe as they need to be. There's uh, issues around scalability, maybe the most important one with a lot of the more advanced privacy tech, you either get blow up in size on, on the blockchain, or you get blow up in CPU usage, um, So or you get a more like subtle scalability issue like, oh, well, I don't actually know which transaction output was spent. So if I don't know which was spent, I can't like prune, I can't make any kind of reasonable scalability over the long term. So there's a lot of issues around, um, around making these more advanced uh, cryptographic techniques really work for privacy. Um, there's also many other issues like network effects means that the anonymity set of altcoins is reduced. And also just generally, if we're going to make a new altcoin every time we need a new feature, we're just going to have an infinite number of altcoins. So that's, that's basically my answer. So, can we talk a little bit about uh, CoinSwap and CoinJoin? Sure, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want me to just like give a short version of what they are? Yeah? Yes. So like, yes. 
CoinJoin is the idea that you can make one transaction in which multiple people make their payments. They don't have to trust each other because they all provide inputs, they all provide outputs, and they all sign it when they're happy with it. So you can use that uh, to improve uh, fungibility because it makes it more difficult for an observer to know. Sometimes it makes it impossible for the observer to know which output belongs or came from which, um, which person who put money in. So coin join is a slightly easier thing to arrange because uh, you just make one transaction and it either goes through it or it doesn't. Nobody's at risk of losing any money. Coin swap is a more advanced idea where you, you say, um, my, my issue is I don't really want the, um, the history of my transactions to be known because obviously inputs connect to, uh, outputs connected to, to the input of the next transaction and so on and so on. So you, you have a history. And you can break that history with CoinSwap by creating a scenario where if one transaction goes through, the other transaction must also go through, even though they don't have any connected inputs and outputs. And the way you do that um, fundamentally is by using um, the pre-image of a hash, a hash function. By the way, most people have heard the term atomic swap nowadays. So CoinSwap is really like the same idea, but trying to use it specifically for privacy. And there's a whole bunch of ways of doing it, but Short version is coin swap is going to be um, uh, it's going to use less space on the blockchain in order to achieve like similar levels of fungibility than coin join, but coin join is easier to arrange and is, is, is more smooth. So there's kind of trade-offs. So the title of your talk at Milan Bitcoin Meetup, and if you guys want to, to see all the video, there is the link in the description of this video. Here's Reversible transaction is Bitcoin's best feature. But my question is, wasn't its irreversible transaction feature the best one? Um, yes, uh, it's, it's, I think it's what we call a clickbait type. Right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not real. I don't really mean that Bitcoin transactions are reversible. But I'm trying to uh, point out a kind of... Um, an aspect that's becoming particularly important now after SegWit because we're able to do certain kinds of contracts more easily where and what I'm particularly referring to in saying reversible is what I mean is you, you can create um, refund transactions so you and I can engage in a contract but before we engage in the contract we can make a transaction let's say you're buying something from me but in a complicated way you can you can have a refund before we actually do the, the, the contract and that can be prepared in advance. And then we can do our negotiation, and this will usually involve multi-sig two of two addresses, for example. And you know, if everything's okay, if I perform as the contract requests, fine. But if I don't, you've got the refund, so you get that chance to reverse, not literally reverse the transaction, but reverse the contract, in fact. So this kind of thing is used you know, in some ways in Lightning, and it's, it's also used in, in some other like constructions that I'm going to present tomorrow. So. Okay, now I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay, not so thank you very much no problem. It's for great. everything. Thank you, everyone if that is watching us. And I think another block has passed, and <laughs> that's perfect. I'll see you at the next block. Bye!